Good morning. Okay, so basically, populations around the world are growing fast, right? Uh, everybody in this room is probably well aware of this. By 2050, 16% of the world's population is going to be 65 or older. It's about a translates to about 1.6 billion people. It's a lot of people. Um, the reasons for this, well, there's a combination of reasons, but generally lower fertility um, and increases in longevity. In the United States, right, basically life expectancy here is uh, increasing. The, the chart on the, on the left shows for uh, the top, top <laughs> line there is men and women. Basically, you know, in 2000, it's around 78 or so, and by 2100, maybe around 95. And then the uh, pyramid charts, the population pyramid charts on the right, basically show the same thing. And you know, the uh, getting fatter over time at the at the top end here. The aging effect. Well, what does this basically mean? Well, you know, with age, as some of us get older, uh, I certainly am well aware of this. Uh, you know, disease and mobility impairments start to take take their effect. They increase percentage-wise, um, and also physical limitations in, increase. Well, the um, the importance of the aging effect on on elderly elderly mobility uh, is because mobility is related to quality of life and independence, those sorts of things, right? And one of the ways we measure uh, or gauge mobility is through uh, travel time, right? Travel durations, trip durations, things of that nature. Traditionally, um, travel times have been estimated using a, a uh, four-step approach, um, generation, uh, distribution, modal split, and assignment. This particular study, uh, we're going to go ahead and we model travel times directly, okay? So we, we basically have actual travel times as recorded by travelers and associated with various traveler, household, um, travel mode, and, and purpose characteristics. Okay, so past research basically has shown that travel patterns are inherently complex. Time is a component, it's very dynamic. Um, heterogeneity, you know, differences exist that um, uh, with respect to people, places, and things that influence travel, behavior and activity. So again, travel hack activity itself is influenced by numerous factors, uh, trip or origin, destination, transportation availability and accessibility, socioeconomic and demographic factors, um, land use, population densities, and so forth. Also, you know, various methods have been used to estimate travel times, linear regression, simultaneous equations, etc. Uh, hazard-based duration models, which we'll, we'll talk about here in a second, with and without random parameters. This study uh, advances the hazard-based approach um, by accounting for unobserved factors and correlations which affect elderly uh, travel activity durations. Again, the, the methodology we're using here is a hazard-based duration analysis. Uh, in other disciplines, this has been used as a widely used technique used in other fields, it's commonly called uh, survival analysis and biostatistics, you know, failure time analysis in, 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 in engineering and in industry, uh, event history analysis and sociology. And like any other estimate, uh, uh, method to estimate things, you know, we account for the effect of explanatory factors. Uh, Hazard-based analysis is appropriate for when you have probabilities that change over time. Okay. For example, uh, consider, you know, somebody leaving their house to, to, to go someplace for an activity. Consider that the duration of trip time is starting when the person uh, leaves home and begins traveling. Okay? Duration analysis can account for the possibility, the probability of the traveler arriving at some specified point in time will change with time. Okay? And that could be, for example, congestion, traffic accident, mechanical issue, and so forth. Oops, let me go back. All right. So, in other words, hazard-based analysis looks at the conditional probability that the trip duration will end at some point in time t, given that the duration has continued up until that point in time t. Okay. Now we formulate this conditional probability in the form of a hazard function, right? which um, 
assumes that the covariates or the explanatory factors, the, uh, the x's here, act multiplicatively upon some baseline or underlying hazard function, hazard distribution there. Okay. In transportation, all right, uh, or in just in general, you, there's lots of different uh, distributions that you can use. Um, this particular study, we, we consider the exponential, uh, which means that the hazard is constant, doesn't change with time. The Weibull, um, right here, which has a ha hazard that monotonically increases or decreases. What that means is that it either increases, only increases, or only decreases. Or the law of logistic, which is non-monotonic. It can do either increase and decrease. Okay. So there's two critical concerns that we're analyzing. Is we, we have the, the, the known stuff, the stuff that we can measure, but we also are concerned with things that we can't see, that we don't know. Um, so we're concerned with the unobserved heterogeneity, or the, uh, the uh, unobserved differences that exist across observations. Okay? But we're also concerned with unobserved factors that are correlated across those observations and, and, the, and the explanatory factors. Now we address this by allowing the coefficient, the betas, in the equation that we showed earlier for the hazard function. I know I'm going quick. Um, by allowing the betas to vary. So what we basically do by doing this is we're, we're modifying um, it to include a stochastic component. Okay? Specifically, we introduce terms to capture both heterogeneity and the correlation. So originally, if you just have a fixed parameter, you have what uh, is called the, 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 the deterministic component, which is the beta right there. That's the measurable part. And then the, the part that I talked about here that we introduced, we add a stochastic component, is this right here, all right? And we'll just say that, that this, uh, this gamma here, this matrix, will account for our correlations, and this vector here will account for our unobserved heterogeneity across the observations. And what we end up with here is what we'll term as the random parameter. So if you hear that term random parameter, it basically is just a fancy way of saying we have a we're including a fixed component, a deterministic component, a part that's measured, which is this part, and a part that's unknown or unobserved, which is this part. Okay, so then we take this gamma, uh, this matrix, and we multiply it by its transpose, and, we, and it yields us a covariance matrix, okay, which is right here. And then we use that, basically, to get our correlation matrix. And this is what we want here, is we have these correlations. And remember, these are unobserved correlations because it's in that stochastic component between our random parameters. In this case, the, uh, the, the correlation between random parameter one and random parameter two. Okay, so the data uh, we used in this study is a 2009 National Household Transportation uh, Survey conducted by uh, the Federal Highway Administration. Large survey, they just came out with a new one. There's some important differences that I'm kind of excited about, but uh, that's for later. Um, information obtained, is it, lots of different questions and whatnot in this survey. Uh, demographics, locational characteristics, population densities, things of that nature. Um, they also included in this survey a travel diary where individuals uh, you know, specify the time, location, the activity, the mode, the purpose of their travel. The study area for this particular portion of the study was the New York CMSA, the Consolidated Metropolitan Statistical Area. New York, this, this particular one consists of parts of New, you know, New York City, uh, parts of Connecticut, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Uh, we extracted data for two, basically two different age groups for this portion of the study. 65 through 74, which we kind of term the young seniors, and then 75 and older, which are the old seniors. Um, the, the data itself was an unbalanced panel data that we looked at by individuals. So, for instance, you had household information, but say um, the household had two older adults, and one adult had five observations, and the other adult had two observations, so therefore it's an unbalanced panel, and that's how we looked at the data. So it's by individual, and it was unbalanced. 
All right, we, we uh, evaluated six different models from fixed parameters where the, the betas, the coefficients didn't vary, to all the way to correlated random, grouped random parameter models. The grouped basically meaning that we, it was panel data by individual. Uh, we tested model fit by using the likelihood ratio test, um, AIC and BIC. One note about the, the bottom two are, were used uh, primarily to see the impact of additional parameters. When you introduce uh, random parameters and correlated random parameters into the model, you raise the number of parameters. So basically what these two um, criterion do is they penalize the model for having more parameters, right? So you gotta balance things out a little bit. The best model specification for each elder the age group, right? So for the young seniors was the correlated group random parameters model using the Weibull distribution. And for 75 and older uh, was the correlated group random parameters model using the log logistics model. Um, and this is interesting because again, as I mentioned before, the log logistic is not monotonic, so it can vary, you can increase and decrease. And you, you, you do see this in the model. I'll talk about that a little bit here in a minute. Okay, so the first model, these are the results, and I don't expect you to, you know, uh, it's a little bit of an eye test. Lots of parameters. Um, I will say this just as a, as a side note, because it came up in a couple of the other discussions, is uh, disabilities and whatnot. We did have a, a, uh, a parameter for medical conditions that in fact impact travel, and it didn't show st significance in either of the models that we had um, for this particular location. It did in other locations, but not, but not here. Um, the gray areas basically just highlight the random parameters. We had five to include the constant, okay? And just on interpretation, so for instance, here, you can't read this, but this is the medium household income indicator, basically 60,000 to 100,000 uh, annual income. The, uh, the coefficient interpretation, this was an indicator variable, meaning it was either zero or one. So if there was a change from zero to one, um, basically, that results in an increase in the duration, trip durations, of 7.7%. Okay. Also, with the random parameters, um, you get some distributional effects. Each of the random parameters is normally distributed. And so, basically, what you have here in this particular one is 71% 70, of the distribution was above zero, and roughly 29% was below zero. That's information you can use later on, but it just shows the value of the random parameter, right? In a, if you had a fixed parameter, it's either going to say they're all, this is assuming all of them were positive per se, whereas the random parameter accounts for both uh, positive and negative uh, observations, or the effects of the observations. Okay. So this is the same, this is the same information, just in a, you know, without all the numbers. Um, basically, a green arrow means the impact of the variable on trip durations, that it, it increases trip durations. Uh, the red arrow means that it decreases the trip durations. And um, for the random parameters I've just included right here, these are the, the distributional effects that I just talked about per se. Okay. Um, and again, it, there's shown here four random parameters. I didn't put the constant in this particular part. Um, but um, I will highlight, I'm not going to go through every one of them, but just as a, to show you how this is, is particular can, can be useful or can confirm things that you may have already suspected, these are, I've, well, I've highlighted the effects for all the modes of travel, okay? And you can see that the, the modes that are generally associated with personal conveyance, right? A car, a van, um, an SUV, a pickup, or walking, right? Those are modes, personal conveyance modes shows effects that are all uh, negative, right? So trip durations um, are, are, trip times are reduced. On the other hand, if they used public bus or subway, which are public conveyances, right? And you don't have the, the, the you have to wait, you have to go by their schedule, the trip times are increased. So this is consistent with what you would expect and in, 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 in observe. And that medium household income, that's like, that's not a good 
Yeah, sixty thousand to hundred thousand, basically. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is uh, the other part that we were wanting to get to the correlation effects, and this is now remember this is the unobserved correlation effects. Okay, so really it gets a, it, it, get, it can get a little dicey is probably not the right word, but it can get a little confusing. Um, positive correlation, right? When you when something's positive, we all know this from multiplication in grade school, right? Two positives make a positive, two negatives make a positive. To get a negative, a positive or a negative, or a negative and a positive, right? So it's kind of the same thing. So the effects, the unobserved effects we end up with here is that, remember, this is a correlation between a random parameter pair, right? So two different, two different random parameters. And these are the random parameters that we have here. So, uh, and this is our correlation matrix. So the same parameters in the, t on the, in the rows as in the um, columns. So we have a constant, medium income, car, van, and shopping. So the red arrow, or the green arrow, basically means that there's positive correlation. The red arrow, that there's negative correlation. And we can arrive by those correlations again. So if it's positive, the unobserved effects are combining. They could, one, one effect for one could be positive and the other positive, or one could be negative and the other negative. Right? To get a negative correlation, it could be just positive negative combinations. Okay. Now I, I will I will go back in that we actually do know the actual correlation number, right? We got the we got the so it could be fifty percent, fifty five percent, sixty percent, thirty percent, whatever. Um, so we do we do know the, the correlations. We just don't know the causes behind the correlations. All right, for the seventy five and older. Um, this is the model, and again, uh, as I mentioned before, the gray areas uh, just highlight the random parameters. Um, this is a log logistic uh, function uh, or distribution. It allows for no, uh, non-monotonic uh, hazard functions, so they can increase and decrease. Um, which, you know, with age, if you think about it, that's that makes intuitive sense that your mobility over time or your things may change over time, where before you know go up and then go down. Well, basically what we have here is an inflection point at 15.6 minutes. So the hazard um, increases up until that point in time, 15, 15 and a half minutes, and then decreases. And again, this is just the general summary of the, uh, the results. Um, I will point out a couple here. This is again for 75 and older in the New York area. Uh, um, so we have a, an indicator here for African American. Uh, again, this is an indicator variable for zero to one. So this is uh, interesting because you know if it goes from zero to one, not being African American to being African American, um, trip durations increase by nearly forty-two percent. It's a lot, right? Uh, if you're going to a health facility. Uh, the, the purpose is going to a health facility like you know, doctor's office, dental office, that kind of thing. Um, trip durations go up by 18.5%. So this might just be an indicator that um, you know, they're willing, people are willing to travel farther uh, for specific treatment. Could be lots of different reasons. I uh, don't have that information in this particular study or the, in the survey, the data. And again, uh, correlation effects. I will say this um, on this part, um, on, on the correlation, you know, in both models, the constant was part of um, the correlation. In some models, it's not, right? Um, the fact that it is, it's no different than if, you, if you're familiar with like linear regression where you have a constant and you have a value for the constant. Sometimes it's, it makes sense and sometimes it's just generally not interpretable. It's kind of the same thing here. It's hard to determine what, the, what it means when you have a, a, you know, an unobserved relationship between the car and the constant. It's picking up something that you, do, you don't see. Uh, trying to explain what that is, very difficult. Okay, so in summary, um, we use this, uh, this method, um, it's, it's basically just advanced previous methods and uses of hazard-based analysis to, to look at travel times. It refines uh, our ability to estimate the coefficients. Um, it captures uh, unobserved effects in the, uh, in the um, observations. Um, and uh, again, the Weibull model is preferable in the uh, younger uh, seniors. 
the log logistic was preferable in the older seniors. And this method helps us identify random parameters that are correlated to unobserved factors and, and quantifies that with, you know, with, our, with our correlation. Um, this, this may help uh, reveal uh, relationships that were previously unknown or it may confirm relationships or things that you might suspect. Um, so there's plenty of uses. Um, future research, certainly we could take these travel times with this correlated random parameter approach and compare it to, you know, estimating with the traditional approach and see what we come up with. Uh, there's lots of different things. Again, this, you know, travel uh, survival analysis is used in a lots of different um, disciplines. The correlated random parameter approach certainly can be used there. I mean, I can think of ways to apply this to finance, per se, for, for example, but uh, lots of different uses here. Okay, so I know that was very quick, but uh, any, any questions? Yes. Sure. Yeah, I have not. Uh, we've talked about you can do that with lots of different, you know, as long as you have the data, right? The data's got to be there for you to do that. But, yeah, that would be a very interesting thing. Um, you can look at that. Yep, certainly can. Yes. In, in the feedback, I, I noticed that uh, for, for working mode, uh, actually, uh, is the reduction in terms of the total sum, is that? Probably. I'm just curious about this particular result. So is that, is that a substitution for elderly people? I mean, for a lot of people, it would be more. You would expect that they can travel time will be long. Or is that still people come on that? Well, uh, in that particular case, um, the travel time duration is going down. That would make intuitive sense, right? You get older, your, your trips yeah. are going to be shorter, generally. So uh, we've run this model. This is just a very snapshot of, a, of what we've done. But we've run it on the larger age groups, and you know, younger age groups, and you find an opposite result. So these results are certainly consistent with what your, your intuition suggests. And if they're walking, they're probably walking to a closer destination. Yeah. Yes. Well, I think, you know, I mean, that's a good question, right? Um, because I think it, trip times, like I said at the beginning, you can use that as a gauge for, you know, mobility in terms of, uh, in this particular case, you can, you can basically see, all right, is there an impact of mobility over time? The, the, um, uh, it's a gauge of mobility. If times are changing based on some of these characteristics, what, what's going on there? You know, if the age is, if you have a bunch of characteristics, for 65 to 74 year olds or 75 and older, and you see that in the particular case of walking, the durations are, are getting less. You know, how is that, and this is a very simple example, but how, how can you use that information? Um, you know, I guess that's, it's up to. Yeah, well, this this is a, certainly a way of you can confirm what you're what you're saying, right? Um, also, when you we have had a, other uh, variables in here for population densities. So, for instance, we can stratify uh, low, medium, high, very high population densities. And what you do see is that when you get results, not in these particular cases, but in other cases that we've run, like for instance, Buffalo. I think we had those those that case. Um, you see that travel times decrease with density, right? So the higher the density, the travel times decrease. And then how you use the data, right? I mean, you can, you can make interaction variables, you can group the data in, in a myriad of different ways to try and look at what you're trying to uncover. Yes.
And what's interesting too with this particular method by using parameters that vary is that you're capturing things you can't see or don't know, right? So not only do you have the stuff that you can measure and you understand, but you're also capturing effects that you really don't have an understanding. Any other questions? Okay.